The Union attack begins early in the morning of September 14th. The goal is Turner's Gap, which carries the all-weather National Road over South Mountain. To avoid a costly advance straight up the road, the Federals go around it. The Union Ninth Corps hits the Confederates at Fox's Gap. On the right, the First Corps goes over the top of the mountain at Frosttown Gap. Lee and Longstreet hurry in with reinforcements from Hagerstown. And the battle spreads out all along the ridgeline. All except Turner's Gap itself. But that is about to change. It's September 14th, and the Battle of South Mountain has been raging throughout most of the day. And late in the afternoon, Gibbon's Black Hat Brigade is ordered to move up along the National Road and attack Turner's Gap frontally. Now, there are Confederate defenders up in the Gap. They have chosen to dig in behind a stone wall with a ditch behind it about halfway down the Gap. It's late afternoon. The sun is going down just like it is now. We're a short distance below Turner's Gap on South Mountain. The stone wall behind us is lined with Georgians from Colquitt's Brigade. They're looking out the same way we are now. And then as the sun began to set, coming up the old National Road, right toward Turner's Gap, came a very large number of troops. And they knew there were more troops there than they could probably handle. If you're a private soldier in Gibbon's Brigade, you perhaps have that sinking feeling in your stomach that here we go again. Another tough stand-up frontal fight. Looks like we're going straight back into it again. It's like Bronner's Farm. As one of the men in the brigade said, it was an ugly looking place to attack. Moving straight toward the gap, brigade commander John Gibbon places two of his regiments to the left of the National Road and two on the right. The 7th Wisconsin leads to the right of the road with the 6th in support. With the 7th taking severe fire from their right front, the 6th is called on to come up and engage the Confederates who are firing from behind trees and a stone wall. We'll go right now. I'll be with the colors until we pass the end of the 7th, and I'll stay there till the whole line goes by. Understand? I have it, Colonel. Captain Brown. Sir. Without doubling, right face. Company, two right. Right face. The rest of you, forward and quick time. And when you reach this spot, right face, double quick. And when the company in front of you clears, close it up. Hunter's done. Hunter's done, Major. All right. Company, follow me, go quick, forward, The space beyond the 7th Wisconsin is limited. Only half of the 6th can deploy and fire their weapons. The situation is intolerable, but the Confederates are not about to give way. That's when Colonel Edward Bragg shows innovation, ability, and poise, and all while under fire. Dog! Here's what we're gonna do. You'll have the right wing. Advance and fire a volley. Then have your men lie down, and I'll bring the left wing over and we'll fire, you see? We're moving up South Mountain now, as Gibbon's men were, at about 5 o'clock in the afternoon on the 14th, just about this time now. It's getting dark, and as the 6th Wisconsin reaches this position, Bragg realizes that he needs to narrow the front of his regiment and start leapfrogging the wings of the regiment to drive back the Confederates that are opposing his advance. Fire at the right oblique, but advance straight forward. I don't want to lose contact with the 7th. All right, sir. Tell Captain Callis with the 7th that we're moving up to support on his right and pushing forward. He'll order Major Dawes of the right wing to open fire on the Confederates and then have his men lie down. Fire! 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 Fire
while Bragg moves the left wing behind the right wing and then straight over top of them. Stepping in between the soldiers, the left wing will come up and deliver their fire into the Confederates. Be ready. Are you loaded? loaded. Is everybody loaded? Yes, yes sir. Got him ready. Here we go now. Let him leave. Hey, here you go, Rob. Burn. I'm like that one, Rob. Lie down. And then they too will lie down. Major Dawes is going to order the right wing to get up. The guns are loaded. They'll move past the left wing, and they'll deliver their fire up into the woods towards the Confederates. Let them leave. And so the two wings will leapfrog to drive the Confederates back. Keep it hot, boy. These aren't tactics that Colonel Bragg read in the tactical manual. This is something that Bragg thought of in the emergency of the moment. And it's an excellent example of the innovation of a volunteer officer, something you might not find with a regular Army officer.